Slavery is the most contentious issue our country has ever faced. Many Americans believe the problem ended with the Civil War, but when journalist Frances Cossey began investigating the roots of our current racial conflicts, she discovered our nation and her own family are still haunted by slavery's legacy. Cossey's new documentary about that hidden history, The Long Shadow, is being screened at Episcopal churches throughout the Chicago area. To learn more, let's welcome Rory Smith, a member of the Anti-Racism Commission of the Episcopal Diocese of Chicago, Laura Singer, coordinator of the Anti-Racism Committee at St. John's Episcopal Church and a trained facilitator for the Pathway to Reconciliation program, and Reverend Kendra Joyner Miller, associate pastor at First Congregational Church of Glen Ellen, who is working with the Together is Better Alliance. Why did Francis Cossey make this documentary? I think understanding our history with racism allows us to also understand the current situation. Um, we've seen heightened racial tensions in our country and in our world recently. And um, by exploring our past, we can understand our present and hope and dream for who we can be in the future. So this film, The Long Shadow, Francis Cossey's done a foundational piece that we believe in the Episcopal Diocese of Chicago that every church ought to see this, and every church in our diocese is being asked to view it. Tell me a little bit more about what you see as particularly helpful about this film and why you have this commitment to showing the film and, and what other programming you're doing around it. Well, I think this movie challenges the common history lessons that we've been taught about the founding of our country as far as the role of racism and white supremacy. I think this movie helps dispel many of the myths that we have about how our country was founded and exposes kind of this this hidden foundation that we have um, around, anti, around racism and systemic racism. So this movie starts to help us explore those ideas in our, in our world and our, in our church. And for the Episcopal Diocese of Chicago, uh, as, the, as part of our baptismal covenant, to treat people the way we would want to be treated, to love one another, um, we re recognize, as the Episcopal National Episcopal Church, recognize that we need to look at our individual roles, our diocesan roles in this legacy of slavery. So that's what we're at the heart of in the Episcopal Diocese of Chicago. Working with the To Together is Better Alliance, it's been really beautiful to see the ways that um, education and information can lead to inspiration, right? That we hope um, we can provide people with a base level of education and through this film really working to do that. Um, but not letting it stop there, right? It's the old adage that if you pray about hunger, you need to go out and feed people. Um, if you pray to end racism, you need to work to educate people and then inspire change around issues of racial justice. Um, and this film really helps us do that, and it's wonderful to get to partner with uh, the Diocese of Chicago and other churches uh, throughout Chicagoland area to really begin to do that work together. What, what kind of reactions have you seen to the film? Yeah, so it's been really interesting. I think uh, it's been diverse in that we have some people for whom this is really groundbreaking and really relevatory, right? They'd never thought of the way that uh, this history has affected and still affects our country. And for some people, it's an affirmation or a recognition of beliefs that they already hold on issues of racial justice. And, and I think when we build that common ground, then we get to hope and dream about where we go together. It's not people on different levels or playing fields, but all of us as one community asking now, what can we do as the people of God? Sure, yeah. I think one of the things I noticed about the film was the continuity of looking at progress and then backlash, mm -hmm. progress and backlash with the, the Civil War and Reconstruction and a backlash to that and Civil Rights Movement and a backlash and then, and then looking at how that, that might be, a, we might be having a backlash now today. What we found in the way in which we look at systemic racism is that there's a whole construct designed to protect power and privilege. Mm -hmm. And whenever those constructs are challenged, that backlash is, is sort of created in new and different ways, either through laws, procedures, rules, policies, that um, we have a hand in saying uh, how those rules are made. One of the things that we find is that sometimes it's wittingly or unwittingly. Uh, people do things or they make rules, they make procedures that uphold uh, white supremacy or that construct, that concept uh, to the detriment of those who are not in that power base of and privilege of society. 
And so that affects not just people of color, uh, not just African Americans, but it's all people of color. It's anyone who has a different cultural uh, view uh, that suddenly those people become others. And when we're dealing with others, we treat them differently. And we're, we're trying to get to the point where once we recognize this information, that we can all treat each other the way that our faith calls us to treat one another. We're all God's children, and we should all treat each other like loved brothers and sisters. So I think one of the pieces that you brought up was bringing people to, to the same place so that we're speaking the same language, mm -hmm. so that we're understanding it. I think uh, one of the challenges that may be out there is people saying, you know, I am a I am a white person, but I'm not racist, and I don't feel like I'm privileged. Why are you saying that I'm privileged? How how do you address that? Does that come up? Yeah. Um, so I'm a minister in the United Church of Christ, and our denomination has a curriculum on white privilege specifically. We're predominantly. Um, white congregation in the western suburbs in Glen Ellen um, and so we've been having conversations around what is our own history with race and actually even the ways that it relates to our faith what's the earliest image you have of God or have of Jesus and how does race play a part in that and how does power have a play a part in that um, and then being able to continue that conversation and say uh, how do these systems around housing around health care around educational access um, uh, have racial components or maybe even are rooted in racism um, and then how do we own that and how do we work to have conversation partners that are different than ourselves and not necessarily to be the loudest voices but also to listen um, to what other people have to teach us as well and I, I think the, the film uh, Long Shadow there's a lot of uh, information in there that helps explain the systemic racism, that it's not just about racism, about I'm a good person, uh, I don't show racial prejudice in my everyday life, but uh, this film shows the systems that were created around the, the, the laws, the codes, uh, the private institutions, you know, around the social clubs or the uh, uh, social clubs that were set up to provide advantages to people who are white. So I think that's an important uh, discussion that we have, need to have today around systemic racist, racism versus just individual racial prejudice. Mm -hmm. and, and then if we look forward from where this film leaves us, it, it leaves us with the possibility of, of working together to build a, a society that cares for each other. And so that's, what, that's part of the subjective and that's why we want so many people to see this phenomenal film. Have you seen differences in how different generations might react to this film? And, and are you thinking about about how to engage people who are who grew up in different eras, who who grew up with different understandings? I, I would say that I, one area of hope I see. I have a fourteen-year-old daughter, and I see that she is has a better language for talking about uh, racism and white supremacy ideology. So I'm hopeful, I think this film will help many many older generations come up with a shared language mm -hmm. so we can be talking about the same thing, systemic racism, white privilege, understanding the effects of an ideology of white supremacy. And uh, the author Robin D'Angelo talks about the need for white people to be able to talk coherently about race, that it is a topic that we can be uncomfortable about and have shame about, but if we can put ourselves out there and have a shared language, we can move towards a better society and shared solutions. Will people leave this movie feeling shame? For us, in the work that we're doing, this is not about blaming and shaming. This is about giving people a context to understand the world that they live in and how they can begin to make it better. Uh, the things that have happened in the past are in the past, but what continues from those from the past is all the sort of institutional systemic s structure that helps it to repeat itself in, in, in sort of mutations that have the same oppressive effect. And so once we recognize that, we can change it. And so we're very hopeful. We, our goal is to come out of this feeling in, energized about what's possible. Once you tell the truth, you can then make change. Thank you, Rory, Laura, and Kendra. I'm Liz Dunn for Different Drummers and the Greater Chicago Broadcast Ministries. Keep the faith.